a global positioning system on mobile phones is nothing new, but as they get more advanced, you won't have to bother with these when you can just use this. Hi, I'm Layla Mackey, and you're watching Press Play. GPS, the global positioning system, was originally a U.S. military application. But now, it can be found everywhere, including your mobile handset. In fact, market leader Nokia shipped 4.5 million GPS phones last quarter alone. The satellite navigation firm Garmin recently joined forces with PC manufacturer Azutech to develop co-branded location-centric phones. The new alliance called Garmin Azus will release two handsets later this year, the M20 and the G60. More and more phone companies are getting connected services and using mapping services as part of their phone. What we could do, the Garmin Asus relationship could do, was offer a lot better uh, working operating systems and a lot better connected systems than a lot of our competitors out there. Um, it's bringing in a sat-nav into a phone instead of a phone having a sat-nav apps uh, attached to it. We're doing it completely the different way. The M20 has an onboard satellite navigation system that comes not only preloaded with maps and points of interest, but also offers turn-by-turn, voice-guided directions and automatic recalculation. It comes with a car mount for when you're on the road and has a pedestrian mode for in-hand navigation. The G60 is a touchscreen phone with a 3.5-inch display that features an advanced satellite navigation system with voice-prompted, turn-by-turn directions that speak street names and comes preloaded with maps of North America and Europe. Okay, so you don't need a state-of-the-art GPS phone to avoid having to ask for directions. There's so many applications you can download that will turn your phone into a TomTom. Obviously, the most famous one is Google Maps. It's the market leader and can turn any handset into a fully-fledged sat-nav. Google's mapping app offers street maps, a route planner for traveling by foot, bicycle, car or public transport, and an urban business locator for many countries around the world. But there are plenty of other GPS apps for mobile phones, such as Telmap or CloudMade, that source their maps from a free community mapping project. So how is map data collected? Well, Navtech, which was acquired by Nokia, is the market-leading digital map supplier. It provides data for navigation systems found in cars, portable GPS devices, and web-based applications such as Yahoo Maps. According to Navtech, it relies on first-hand observation rather than just on official government maps. Our team in Singapore went behind the scenes to map out the story. Right here we've got the Navtech vehicle, which is equipped with just about everything required to do mapping for the region. If I open the door and we have a quick look inside, we can see our two operators today. We have Evelyn, who's riding shotgun with all the computer equipment, and on the other side we have Hui In, who's the driver, and also pointing out some of the features that we'll be looking out for. So we can see that Evelyn is now tracking our movement through the streets of Singapore. The antenna on the roof is giving our position to within one metre, but she's also marking as we go along any changes that she sees or any anomalies or any new features that may be along the way. Um, she's marked down previously that we went through a park, we saw a new building under construction, we took down the phone numbers of the developer that was on the front door sign so that we can find out what the name of that place will be. So when it's going to be open, we can actually go back and update the maps accordingly. What's involved with producing a Navtech map? The first step that we do is actually we collect the source data. That's about up to 80,000 sources of data that we actually use uh, for Navtech in terms of building out new countries. This could be information from government agencies, city agencies, uh, and we need to ensure that we verify all of this information before it, it, it goes, before we use it. And then the next step that we use is actually having a, like a local local uh, field staff where the local field teams will actually be driving the roads themselves, ensuring that they capture all of that local nuances that we have, you know, whichever roads that are one way, which are the turn restrictions. And once we have done that, we will actually start to code the maps. The third step that we do is we actually code the maps in our production centers. Well, hopefully you found this interesting. Get it? Found GPS? 
Anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to tune in next week.